Hey everyone, so today I wanted to cover off a release that we've just made for Veeam Backup for Google Cloud Platform, and this is in version one. So before we jump into actually walking through this, and I've done various other walkthroughs of the other public cloud products that we have for Veeam Backup for AWS, which is now at version three, so you may or may not have seen version one and version two of, of that walkthrough, but then also Microsoft Azure and the version one of that, and more recently, version two. So this is, as a version one, it is focused on being able to protect your IaaS instances, so your Google Compute instances that you have running in your GCP organization. So just for purely demo purposes, and by the time this, this uh, demo goes up, this machine will be gone, but this is a simple, Super simple um, offer a, a VM instance that have been uh, that's been deployed in a certain availability zone, um, and I just want to quickly run through how simple it is to start being able to well protect protect that. So first of all, we've exposed this out over over the internet, and I've added in my project already, but. When we go, when we log into this, and obviously you put, you provide your credentials, and as part of the marketplace deployment, you configure access and access control to that. So the first thing to mention is around you come in here to configuration, and this is where we start by adding in our project. So everyone on the team has their has their projects, and you can see here that I've added in mine. If we go into edit, you see what project ID. What are we allowed to do with that? We give it the service account that has access to that. We check the permissions again, and then we could, if there was anything that needed to be changed or we needed to create that user account, we can generate that script to be able to do that. And then finally, as a summary of, well, this is what, this is what we're going to do and this is what permitted tasks are available. So if we go back to configuration, and we then look at the worker projects. Now you can see, uh, sorry, the worker configurations. So what we have here is the workers in a particular region. So as you may have seen, we need to make sure that we have workers in US East 4 and 4C to be precise. So if we go in here, it's pretty simple stuff, is that we choose that US East 4, which is Northern Virginia. We then use C, but what we'd probably suggest is add in A and B as well, just so that you've got that resilience between the availability zones. We then choose our VPC network. And again, I haven't, I've literally done uh, no configuration on here. So I'm just gonna allow uh, the very basics that will allow me to actually create that that backup. So we're going to deploy that and we're going to, in fact, I wanted that to be the same HTTPS firewall rule. And finish that. Okay, and then finally it's about where do we want to store the backup? So for those that have seen the other videos where we touch on, we create, we're, we have the ability, and I'll touch on that more when we go through the policy walkthrough, but we have the ability to take the um, native storage snapshots, so the cloud-based storage snapshots, and we store those as a, a restore point, but then we always advise put that off into object storage as well, so Google Cloud storage buckets for that. You can see here that we've got one created in US West 1. I'm going to use that. Now, if I wanted to, I could go in here and I could add one that I'd already created. I have not created one. So for this, the purpose of the demo though, we're gonna be sending it outside of region. Potentially that is a use case for some business to have your backups in a different availability zone. I would recommend that, we would recommend that. Um, and that's it from a um, configuration. The other thing is making sure that we've got the licensing in place. Remember as well that there is a free tier. So if you're just learning 
around Google Cloud Platform as well as all the other clouds and you've got up to 10 instances or maybe more, but 10 you really want to keep protected, well, we've got the ability to do that free with the with the community additional with the free free license. So you can see here that we're using three. Um, then if we come out of that configuration, just to walk around what this looks like. So this is the opening dashboard, if you like, the monitoring view. So it gives you the alarms, the amount of instances that we're protecting, um, the total policies, and the total repositories in which we're storing those backups. And then it gives you a, a breakdown of the last 24 hours of what is, what's happening, what's being done. Then we have our instances. So you can see here that we've only got those two um, being shown. And then we can go to policies, which is where we'll see that one by colleague David Hill. But I'm going to go in and I want to create one just from scratch to be able to protect that one machine that I have in there. So first of all, we give it a name. We then choose our project and we can all throughout the wizards, we can we can go and we can check these credentials and make sure that what we're trying to achieve is actually possible rather than having a policy fail later on because of that. We can choose the regions in which we want to protect. So we could say all of them, we could just move all 24 over, or we could just go and choose that Western Virginia so that we can see the instances within there. And then we've got the ability to either select the resources to protect either by just saying all resources or do it specifically. So we can do it via instance, which is fine for um I'm sorry. Which is fine for me because I've only got one machine. Um but I also you've also got the ability to use labels and I have actually put a label in there called tier one. And that would then if you label all of the machines that you feel need the key backup and the value tier one, we can start to um, protect those workloads in a more dynamic fashion. So let's just select that, um, protect those machines and hit apply. We could also do the same for exclude. So if you had certain workloads, let's say you did want to do the whole environment and you, you, um, but you wanted to exclude certain certain machines from that, you could do that as well using the same same process. Okay, so then it comes down to, okay, so we've got the ability to dif differentiate between snapshot settings. This is where I mentioned I want to be able to um, be able to use the snapshot methodology, which is by default on and then enable the backups as well. So this is where I want to store those backups. This is where we choose that, that cloud repository. Then under schedule, so at the moment we have no schedule. So up in the top right hand corner, you see that we don't have, it's, it's gonna cost us nothing. If we create this as is with no schedule, it's gonna cost us nothing because ultimately it's gonna do nothing. But when we start to add in the daily retention, and let's go in and configure that. So at the moment, it's going to cost us 11 cents for just taking one snapshot every day at midday. Now, if we wanted to say, okay, I want to do it on the hour every hour. And let, let's just say, select all of those. And let's say that we do just want to have 24 hourly snapshots we hit apply let's go back in so obviously there that's that's a that's dynamically updating the the cost there but let let's also say i want to take a backup every four hours so let's say i want i want that one at um midnight four in the morning eight in the morning midday four in the afternoon and eight in the evening. I want it to run every day. I want to keep seven days worth of retention and I want to keep the backups for 28 days. Let's really reduce that for demo purposes down to keep backups for seven days. 
we apply that, you saw that go up ever so slightly. Now this is based on that machine. It's not very old. It's literally the smallest compute offering that I could get in GCP. So it gives you that. If we then started to look at weekly, monthly, yearlies, you then you'll then see obviously that that cost um, go up as well. And remember, it's an estimation. It's pulling in the APIs to give you a good understanding of what that looks like. Now, then before we get on to the uh, retries and notifications and then the summary, we have the cost estimation. So really, it's going to cost us 11 cents for the snapshots. It's going to cost us 45 cents for the, the backups. And then remember, I'm taking from US East 4, from Northern Virginia, I'm sending those backups into US West. So that egress or that those um, East to West traffic um, ingress charges, egress charges are coming out at seven cents and then the transactions for that. So you can see there the breakdown of that estimation and you can see what instances are gonna cost what. Bearing in mind, if you had more, you would get a bigger, broader, um, report to, to show that then under export you've got the ability to push this out to your to your csv or to an xml for using that somewhere else then next what do you want to do if that policy fails for whatever reasons you want to automatically re retry and then we have notifications email notifications etc so you can configure that but it's a global notification setting that we haven't done so in the lab but then that gives us the ability to de define what and where those reports get sent. You've got the ability to then have the summary and see what's what we've suggested we want to do as that policy. And then we hit finish. So then because this is so then because this is a brand new backup job. This is where it will either wait for that on the hour. So you can see here that it's next going to run at 5 p.m. Or we can automatically kick that off. But you would really focus on what your policy is, run those policies. That's then going to start off that snapshot backup schedule. And you've then got the recovery options based on that. And with that, I'm going to leave it as that as a very 101 high level overview of what the version one looks like. We can come back and we can start looking into recovery techniques and what we can actually do to get data back into that system. But with that, thanks for watching.